Alright, so welcome back to another tutorial. So today we are going to be going over Orca again. I'm going to do an updated tutorial on my last tutorial, which is actually my most watched um, video on YouTube. So uh, I've learned a lot about Orca using it in the past four years since the last video, so I thought I would just... Um, update you guys and do a new tutorial um, and try and go a little more in depth on how I use Orca and use it with some different things. Uh, I'll be using it with Pilot over here like I did in the last tutorial. Um, I won't be using Cassetter um, because it doesn't work anymore on my computer. So um, I'll also be using Ableton a little later on to show you some actual uh, MIDI functionality. Um, and uh, I'll be going over some simple operators, some more complex operators. I'll be um, showing you like sections of code, like instead of like single operators and their use, I'll be showing you some modules you can create to generate different types of things. Um, and I think that's where the fun comes in in Orca. Um, so yeah, uh, I wanted to sort of show you um, the operator. So if you press Command G, Control G, actually lists all the operators for you and what they do. Um, I'll be going over the ones that I see the most useful. Um, the first thing I'm going to do um, is set the BPM. Uh, so if you use the dollar sign, which is script, you can type in BPM colon uh, whatever you want the BPM to be. And by itself, this does nothing, but we want to um, bang it. So the way that operators get um, uh, get used or get triggered uh, is with a bang. So the most common one is D, um, which is uh, a delay of the frame rate. If you see down here, you can see the frame counting up and down. D will be a delay of that, and the first, uh, the default setting for D is sort of like four on the floor. So if I type in, if I type in eight here, uh, eight is the first um, inlet on the right. Um, and as you sort of go down, you can see this get faster and faster. So this is going to be your main sort of clock source. Um, there's a few other um, a few other ways you can do this, but um, one will bang every frame rate. Um, this will be sort of a multiple of that, so two multiplies this by two, or maybe divides it. That is a way, good way of thinking of it, making it slower. Um, one thing to note: um, all the operands go between a between zero and z. So um, it's a 36, uh, 36 based thing. So if you're if you're counting uh, C, which is the clock, um, which counts upward uh, of the frame rate, so it's like counts one to ten. Um, if you go to Z, it'll count all the way to Z, and that's the highest value that you can see. Um, this is just useful to know for um, for when you're making, let's say you want a 16 step sequence, like instead of 16, it would be G because it'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and G would be would represent 16. So for things like that, we can get into um, sort of later. Um, but yeah, let's start patching. Um, the simplest way to start, I can zoom in here is, um, this is the operator that sends UDP, a uh, semicolon, a colon sends MIDI information, which we'll get into later. Um, they're very similar, so um, for the colon, that's MIDI. Uh, the first inlet is your MIDI channel. The second inlet is the octave. Um, and the third inlet is the note. And then the velocity and the length of the gate. So uh, for the UDP, um, Pilot, by the way, is a companion app for Orca um, made by 100 Rabbits, which also make Orca. Um, uh, and this inlet's very similar. So the first one is going to be your synthesizer. So there are um, 
11, 12, 13, 15. There's 15 voices to choose from, uh, 0 through F. Um, I'm going to be using 5 because it's like sine wave-ish type of thing. Um, and it says what these are here. Um, they're sort of FM based. Um, uh, so 8i would be um, like four operator sine wave kind of like a like a FM or like a, a wave folded kind of sine sound. Um, and then there's sine square. There's some square saws um, and yeah, some other things. Uh, and you can go. Uh, see the documentation for Pilot on their GitHub or on either of their websites. Um, but yeah, five and our octave and then our note. So should hear note coming out. That's recording. So. Uh, another thing, if you press spacebar, it'll pause the clock. Um, so I'm gonna be doing that to speak a few times. Um, yeah, so here's your note. Uh, a way you can make a sequence of notes is by using T. Um, I'll also talk about uh, J. So uppercase J is jump. So this just jumps whatever value is up here uh, directly downward below it down here. So. Uh, something that's useful to know is when you're working on like X, Y grid axis like this, um, things like J will be useful in getting into some tight spaces um, where you need to move something up or down. Because uh, these operators like D has these two inlets on the left and right. Um, and if you put an operator here that goes, that has more inlets on the left, you don't want it to interact with D or you don't want the same value that you're using to modulate D. Uh, to modulate some other things. Um, so I use J to sort of make sure nothing is in the way um, on my X axis, which is usually where you'd uh, put operators um, or, yeah, put things in. So uh, T is what we're going to use. Um, this would have been fine to put here because there's only two inlets here, so it doesn't interact um, with anything. Uh, but I like to just keep it. Um, here for the sense of the tutorial. Um, T takes three inlets, so your, or it takes two actually, or no, it takes three. Um, the length, so let's say you want a four step sequence. Um, you can do, put some notes in, and then we can use clock, which counts at that frame rate to sequence through these notes. Um, and you'll notice clock is always going to sequence at the frame rate and there's a few ways you can get around this um you can just have this be uh set the division here uh so we're sequencing this the same um the same way basically with the same division of the clock or the same delay of the clock um, you can also use jump twice to get this value from up here to down here you can have C be lowercase um, and then you can uh, trigger C with another delay so any lowercase operators is kind of conditional, so if they receive a bang um, in one of the directions that's uh, touching the operator, it will it will act. Um, otherwise, it'll do nothing. Um, another useful thing that I use a lot is random. So random. Uh, uppercase R will have a range of uh, this to this. So your the left inlet is the, the lowest range and the top inlet is the highest. Um, by default, the lowest is zero. So I can make this um, delay uh, a random range of zero to four. And 
now let's say we wanted to change the octave um, dynamically or randomly. So this is in um, this is in an awkward place. We can't put a random here because we have our J here and some other stuff around. So how do we get there? Um, we are going to use X. So X translates um, whatever your inlet is on the X and Y axis. So you have your, shows you what your things are here. Um, so let's say we want our random value between zero and six. Um, we're gonna move this down. So I like to just count. So it's one, two, three, four, five spaces down. Um, so on our Y axis, we would put five. And now it translates this random value that is our, our inlet for X on the right, um, uh, translates it down five spaces. If we did six, it would be here, seven, et cetera. But we want it to be five. We want it to be five in that, um, in that position where the octave inlet is on our UDP messages. Also, a note on notes. Um, lowercase notes are sharp, and uh, uppercase notes are normal or flat. Um, I don't have that much musical background, so if I am explaining things with notes later on or in this video, please forgive me. Um, I don't know that much. <laughs> but um, Orca, I feel like, is an, a good environment for those who maybe don't have that musical knowledge because they can create a lot of generative patches uh, just by using numbers and multiplication, a bunch of uh, the useful operators in here. We can even change the synthesizer the same way. So we use the X and we want to go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spaces. So we put eight here and we can do a random synth between zero and nine. So A, A is 10, so that's why the range is between zero and nine. Uh, but I'm just gonna stick with five for now, because it gets a little crazy. And you can also just copy and paste this as a module a bunch of times, which is just Command C and Command V, or Control C, Control V, and have this be a different synth. So some of the synths are mono, um, and some are polyphonic. So that is one way you can make a sequence, and I'll keep this on the side here. And then um, a performance thing, or just something to note, um, you can mute uh, sort of lines of code by um, selecting your code. I'm gonna move this over again using Control C, Control C. If I select this code um, and I do command forward slash um, or control forward slash, it will um, add hashtags, um, which uh, mute these lines of code. So the frame rate is still going, but um, these lines are now muted. Uh, if I make sure that I click the first and last uh, hashtag here, can mute and unmute things. So you can have like sections of code um, in your performance for different things, um, or you can just save things that way um, in case you wanna bring them back. Um, a note on saving things, you can save by going to file and export um, what I do, and then you can import things by going to file and then like import modules or open. Um, I like to just select all and then copy and paste it into my notes app or some text file um, 
that's plain text and that lets me store and recall them pretty easily and then you can just copy it from your notes um, and paste it back in here and it has worked pretty seamlessly um, for me in the past uh, so yeah let's talk about some other ways of sequencing so another way we can sequence is by using um, either X or G uh, we talked about X already so I'll talk about G so G generates um, an inlet uh, on the X and Y axis so uh, and this will kind of look like a tracker so you can have um, a bunch of um, uh, a bunch of different operators let's do one two three four five six seven eight nine ten let's make a ten step sequence and we're gonna make these all the same oscillator um, some random different uh, octaves and some random notes um, and you'll see why in a second so um, there are operators that move in directions so E moves eastwards um, and when E hits something it will trigger it'll send a bang so you see at the end there um, they're being triggered so if I put an E here when that E reaches here it's gonna trigger and you might see what we're trying to create here um, there's south that moves downward north moves upward and west moves west so you can get quite creative with um, and these move at the frame rate you can get quite creative with um, triggering things uh, so uh, let's do let's put an E here um, we want to generate an E and yeah, we want to generate it on this X axis so that it will start to sequence through uh, these notes here so if we put a clock where it says Y um, the other inlet is the length so you can have this be however many long you want but we're only going to be using E for this so um, for now so let's just put one and do it on the clock so you're seeing you're seeing as I change the length of um, uh, the clock it's starting to modulate between either 1 and 8 or 1 and 10. So A is 10, so it's going through all of them, um, whereas the default is 8. So I'm actually going to cut off these last two. And that is a fun way that you can sequence through things. You can make this as long as you want. Like I can make this go to G, and I can keep going. Um, these don't have to be in a line. They can be um, staggered or kind of anywhere on the grid. And you can get uh, little fun, weird sequences by playing around with where on the grid they are. Um, uh, yes, yeah, it's getting messy here. Um, yeah, that's one way you could do it. You can also use, um, T like we did before to get some different operators. So E goes eastward, but then I can set the length of T to 2 and use south 2 and randomly um, change between randomly change between east and south so sometimes it will um, 
send to E. So basically I'm just sequencing through um, a two-step sequence that's either E or S. Um, so sometimes it'll generate uh, eastward uh, operands and sometimes it'll generate southward ones. And we can use the southward ones to um, trigger something else. So sometimes you'll see if the E um, interacts with the south, it'll just bang um, in that spot. Uh, so this is a way to sort of get um, some variety and interactivity between different operands. Um, then we can have something else down here that's like, let's say, a different synth. Um, and just a constant note. Um, yeah, and you can play around with that. There's a lot of various ways um, to do things that way, and that's also fun in terms of like the puzzle that kind of is Orca. Um, and I want to show you some generative um, uses uh, of notes. Um, I don't often do it the way I just showed you, um, but I'll show you a couple ways in a couple modules that I like to create um, for generating sounds um, or generating notes. Um, so we have our D uh, triggering uh, or banging the UDP. Our synth, our octave, and our note. Uh, we are going to use um, A, which is add. Um, and I want to add A so that our starting note is A. Um, and then I want to add things to this. So what I'm going to do is add um, M, which is multiply. Um, and then I'm going to use jump to jump from up here to down here, um, and then add a T, uh, which is our sequence. So, you know, this looks complicated, but all we're doing is adding A to something that we're going to be multiplying, um, and then, uh, our inlet, our right inlet for the thing that we're multiplying is going to be a sequence. So I'm going to make the sequence three steps long. And fill it with five, seven, and nine. So these will be um, added. These will be multiplied by something, and then that will be added to our note. So if this was one, I get a fifth of A, or I get a seventh of A, or a ninth of A. Um, so I'm going to sequence through this randomly. And then I'm also going to trigger um, this at a random rate. And that's already a way to get some sort of generativeness uh, in terms of like um, uh, like making your own scale or sequencing through a scale that way. Um, and then I can multiply this number by a random number between one, zero and four. That's a really easy way to get some really fun sequences. Um, uh, we can also use X. Um, and you can see how this is starting to sort of develop into some modules that you can use over and over again or um, or expand on or compact in some ways. Um, we're going to use X to change our octave over here. So we're going to translate 
some inlet downwards to where the two is, which is our inlet for the octave. Which is nine down. The same thing here. Um, and then I quickly want to go over um, some effects in Pilot. So um, if you look over here, all these are effects that you can use. They're quite harsh. Um, the only one I actually tend to use a lot is reverb and delay. Um, and sometimes the phaser and wah. Um, uh, but the way to access those, um, and we can trigger these, however, um, I can have, uh, this trigger. You can also jump, uh, uh, bangs. So if I do J, it'll translate this bang here and I can use it, um, for something. Uh, if I do a lowercase j, it'll also translate because, um, as I said earlier, lowercase um, lowercase letters only act when they get a um, a trigger. Um, so you can use uppercase or lowercase to jump uh, bangs. I like to use the lowercase one because it looks kind of incognito. Um, and then it's the same operator for UDP. Um, but then you put the name of the effect. Um, you can also go in here and type in uh, this command. Uh, for instance, um, if I type in rev one f, uh, the first inlet one is our mi our dry wet mix, and then the second inlet is the reverb time. Um, but I like to do it here because then I can modulate um, certain parameters, um, which I don't often do for reverb, but if I wanted to, I could. Um, so I'll do one and I'll do something like D. Z is kind of like a freeze reverb because it's the, the Z is like the last value, it's the, the longest the reverb can be. Um, and it tends to get really loud and annoying, so I tend to not go that far. Zero is no reverb. And that goes on your, um, that goes on the master out of pilot uh, and that's specific to pilot so that wouldn't be um, that wouldn't be a MIDI functionality I'll quickly go over um, sort of another way you can uh, sequence through notes um, quickly uh, here is um, And I'll just leave that reverb on because it sounds nice. Uh, this is like our sequence before. Um, but T, you can sort of just make a scale. Like say I want a scale of six notes. And I can randomly sequence through these. So this is a way you can create your own scale of notes that is just um, either being sequenced or you can use this um, for anything. Um, I'll quickly go over variables um, and how to recall them. So if I go here and use V, so the thing with variables is you want to, um, can I put a lowercase d here for now? Um, thing with variables, uh, you want them to be on the upper left corner because um, they are read this way and this way. So if you are making, filling some variable here, 
with a value um you can recall that anywhere that's um this way or downward but if you have something here that you want to recall that variable with it won't work because it want it's reading from left to right so uh the way you store variables by putting um whatever um thing between zero and z here um i like to use a to start with um now this will fill a with this random value and then if I go here, let's do random A and G. I put V here, and then I put A on the right uh, on the right side this time. It's translating this value down here. Um, I can have multiple variables by putting V here, and the second inlet, um, the inlet after uh, the note here is the length or the decay of um, of your synth. Um, so uh, if I want to recall two of those variables, like say A and B, let's say I, I fill B with a variable um, between random zero and four, um, and I want to recall both of them right next to each other, I can use K. Um, I might have to jump K, so. Or actually I don't, because it only has one inlet on that side, so. K, um, there's two variables I want to recall from, and the variables are, oops, this needs to be moved over a bit. Because the outlet of K is going to be directly underneath this, so. We have our synthesizer, our octave, um. Oh, no, I lied. It does need to be moved over. So the outlet of K is going to be right under um, your variable. So um, K outputs uh, multiple variables, um, and it outputs them directly under those variables. So if I fill K with A and I fill it with B, it's going to put out um, this variable, which is the random between 0 and G, directly under A, and it's going to fill out... Uh, put out this variable um, directly under B. So now we have those two random values, and this is just a way um, to get into um, the uh, sort of like tight spaces like I was talking about before. And and the, okay, so the, the inlet after note is actually velocity and then it's the length. So it's actually changing the velocity. So if I do between zero and Z, now we get a random velocity. And if I wanted, um, I'm gonna move these over. If I wanted, I can also do the length, um, make this three. So now we're gonna fill three, vari three variables, have C here, and then put a random between zero and four as the C variable. So now we have three variables that we're all filling with random um, values that are with different ranges, and we're recalling all three of them by using K, typing in our three variables, and um, setting the length of how many variables we're recalling. Then we can also still change our delay time. I want to go over that I've been building a lot recently is um, a way to generate yeah sharp and flat notes. So um, Y, which I haven't gone over, is the the, uh, the Y axis of jump. So jump, or I mean it's the X axis of jump. So J jumps a value from top to bottom, and Y just jumps it from left to right. Um, it's another way to get around tight spaces, and 
you'll see why we need this in a, we'll see why we need this uh, in a second um, so this right here is the same thing as doing this they're both being triggered this is just moving one um, a couple spaces over on the y-axis so we can have our oh uh, our, uh, our synth and our octave and our note. Uh, I'm actually going to turn the reverb off for now by doing going here and doing rev zero zero. Um, we're going to do well. Let me show you something first. So meet this for a second. Um. You can already use uppercase things in sequences, like these are ways to use um, uppercase values. Um, if you have a a lowercase note and you want to make it uppercase, you can add uh, one to it and then add Z to that. So A plus one is one, B plus Z is uppercase A. So this is a very useful tiny module in getting your lowercase notes to turn into uppercase notes. Um, and we'll be using that uh, here shortly. Um, a way to get uppercase notes now back into lowercase is to multiply it by one. So with this uh, and modulating this section um, here, um, we will be able to um, uh, sort of, sorry, we'll be able to um, play around with using uppercase and lowercase notes. Um, and it's a little complicated, so I'll try and explain it very slowly. Um, so we have our note C here. We're going to multiply um basically I'm just show you, I'm just gonna copy and paste what I, I just did so multiply by one we're gonna multiply A by one uh we're gonna add Z and it's kind of uh annoying to do backwards uh but I'll explain in a second so here uh we are adding one to A um and then Z to that result, which results in an uppercase letter, and then we're multiplying that by one to get back to our lowercase letter. So right now, this is just translating all the way down to here. So this inlet is just this. Um, so this is where we're going to start uh, playing with our notes, and I'll be combining uh, the sort of generative thing I was talking about earlier with notes over here um, for our inlet. So add A, um, uh, jump, and then um, ooh, add A, and then multiply, um, jump T with our um, our fifth, seventh, and ninth go through that randomly uh, and multiply that um, by a random number between 0 and 5 so it's adding that number to our letter um, and this sort of number numerical thing we see down here is not going to be representative notes so like it'll be a b c d e f g is our notes but um because we're using numbers to multiply that it will translate out of that range um so they're still notes but they are not going to be represented like a to g um so these are all going to be our our flat notes for now because we're multiplying it by one <laughs> and we want to change this so that we want to basically erase this operator so that sometimes it'll be uppercase because if it's not being multiplied by one, it'll be the uppercase letter, which is the flat letter. Um, 
And how should we do that? We can use um, generator, which will generate things, and I can generate this M, or I can generate a lowercase m, which uh, basically is um, only gets uh, um, only act only is active when it's being triggered. So if I can sequence through using an uppercase m and a lowercase m, I can control whether or not I want it to actually multiply by one or not multiply by one. And a way I can erase that is by moving it on the x um, axis. So I can say, um, generate this or generate the m somewhere else where it's not going to be active, um, uh, or generate nothing. Um, so those are the three things that we want to generate, um, either an uppercase m, a lowercase m, or nothing. Uh, so now they're all they're all flat. Um, to trigger this more often. So we have our generate. We want to move our value one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spaces, which is where this M is. Um, we want to make it three steps long, fill with M lowercase m and nothing. Oop, I want this to be one, sorry. Uh, and then we're going to make a sequence. So, yeah. We're only changing, we only want one value to translate, so. The y-axis is nine. So. Does that work? So now there's no M. Um, uh, we have our sequence above the inlet for G, so make it three steps long. Uh, fill it with M, lowercase m, and nothing. So right now, uh, explaining this whole thing, we have our sequence here, three steps, um, uppercase M, lowercase m, and nothing. We have our G that's generating a certain operator. Um, Right now it's generating the uppercase M and it's moving it down here. Um, uh, it's one, one, we're generating one thing, we're generating one step, which is the M, which is what this inlet is, and we're moving it eight, um, eight steps down on the X axis from here, here to here. So that's there. Um, And when you're moving something down here, it is not going to operate until um, it's left there. So right now, we are moving the M down here, but it is not, it's not, it's generating something there, but it's holding it there because it's, it's like X. It's like moving something from somewhere to somewhere. So we're moving this octave here, but it's not being left there, so it's not doing anything. Um, so a way that we can move this out of the way so that the uppercase M is left there is to um, use I, um, which increments things for the X axis. So I is kind of like clock. It'll just increment upwards, but you can increment by a certain number. So if you increment by two, it'll be, um, it'll go zero, two, four, eight, et cetera. Um, or if increment by three, you can do um, things that way. Um, and then the other inlet is how long you want that increment to be. So if I do two and four, it'll go between zero and two and then go back. So zero, two, zero, two, zero, two. Um, and we can use that over here to move M on the X axis between zero, which is the position it's in now, and two, which would be over here. If I put an I above where the Y inlet is for G, you can see it start to increment and start counting upward, which we don't want because it'll start doing crazy shit. But 
two and four. If I erase all this. Now it's moving M, and you see when M is left, it's actually putting out those numbers. So um, what we needed from M was that one. So it's translating our notes again, and we have to put in our octave again, so I erased it. And those are all our flat notes. So now we want to sequence through T. So we want the M, but we also want um, lowercase M and nothing, so that sometimes it's uh, uppercase and sometimes it's lowercase letters um, by changing it from operating to not operating. So if you sequence through the T randomly, and this is changing our length when this is happening here. So uh, because this inlet is actually doing something, uh, I like to put an X um, above and move something to this space here. So I'm going to put a 1 there so that we know our gate length is always 1, even though it's kind of changing. But that's fine with me. Um, so it's not actually doing anything now, and that is because of the same reason that I was talking about before. If something, if we're moving something to a position, it actually is not going to change um, unless it's explicitly moved there. So we have our value that's being put there, but um, uh, the uppercase letters are not being put there anymore. So a way we can do that is by Squeezing an X in here, that's going to put this inlet uh, back to over here. So instead of using, instead of changing the um, Y axis, which would be the inlet directly to the left of X, uh, that would change uh, where on the Y axis that we're moving this inlet here. We are going to be changing the X axis, which will move this inlet here. Um, uh, two spaces over here. So output of x is going to be directly underneath. We don't want that there. We want it to move here. So what's happening now is we're getting both uppercase and lowercase letters because we're moving the output of a two spaces over here. And this is the inlet for that. Um, and this is um, sort of the module that I'm talking about, even though we're getting some some weird um, outlets out of it. Uh, but yeah, and then we have our octave, which we can change with another X that I can just put over here. And we see how this is floating. Um, we're using G to, to move it. Um, Eight on the Y, we can move this whole thing down and make this seven um, just to keep things a little tighter. Um, so for our X, we want to move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, because it doesn't go to ten. So A. And I like to use lowercase before I start actually using something so that um, there's no output underneath it and it won't erase if I'm if I don't have an inlet so I can make it uppercase now so we're moving whatever our inlet here is uh, eight down on the x-axis so down to here this fun little thing. If you hold command and press the um, arrow keys, so you can sort of jump faster between things. Um, I'm just command seeing and command Ving. Thank you. 
Now I'm using delay. I'm jumping twice, so I'm jumping this bang twice downwards. Actually, thrice downwards. So that I can use random here. So for the delay, I'm going to be using a random for the dry wet mix and then um, a random for the um, delay amount or the delay feedback. I'm not really sure what the inlet um, for the delay is and I don't think there's really that many documentation, that much documentation for it. But um, I can't put another random here because that won't work. So I need to use an X. Um, and I'm only going to move it one space down, so one on the y-axis, and then a random for our inlet for the x. So it's translating this down here. And then these notes are, so the this sequence of um, the fifth, seventh, and ninth of A that we're sequencing that note with um, is sort of a way to make my custom scale and then translating that between that A being flat or sharp. So this fifth, seventh, and ninth will either be um, a flat or sharp of that. Um, and I don't know what scale that is, but it can just be my scale for the purpose of this. Um, and that's just a really fun way of making uh, some generative sequences. Um, you can even do fun things like um, in this space that is um, above where our inlet for um, the range of our delay is. Um, we're also getting value as out of A, so I can have a random there too. And this will just say that um, our delay time, or yeah, our delay, our delay delay, our delay mod is being, is a random range between zero and uh, a random range between zero and our output of A here. So I'm using this uh, multi-purposely as both the inlet for um, uh, our note, but also the inlet for some randomness. Which is just a fun thing that kind of happens with puzzles this way. Um, and it can take up even less space by moving this over. And putting this somewhere. Well, actually, I'm going to leave it over here. So, another thing I wanted to show you that is useful with um, creating some generative patches or um, uh, also kind of visually useful, a uh, couple things I want to show you. Um, the first being uh, um, like conditional commenting. So you know you can comment out a line by putting hashtags. So um, what's fun about this is that this will comment out, it's not gonna actually change anything that drastically but it will comment out specific lines of code. Um, and these are all doing different things on the x-axis. So if I comment out, um, for example, my sequence um, of notes, like if I comment out this line, this is always gonna be nine as the multiple. Um, whereas if I comment out this line, I'm gonna get no sound at all because that's what's sending to um, pilot. So, I can do a thing that generates comments. 
So if I go up here and do a generate and make a sequence that is um, six steps long, and the length of your sequence is kind of your probability, so this would be one sixth probability, whatever percentage that is. Um, if I do A, it'll be 10% probability. Um, and then I want to, our length can be one because we're only using one inlet. Um, and then I can randomly comment out random lines um, and Oop, I need to use a J for this because we wanna we wanna modulate where in this it's um, clocky, but we don't want to modulate the inlet of random. So I'm gonna move this up to put a J here so we can translate this down here and randomly go through um, either there being a hashtag or there not being a hashtag, and then moving that um, randomly on the x-axis. So. I'll delete all these for now. And then set our range. So uh, our code is within 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. I is what it looks like. I set my random range on the y axis, y axis to be between 0 and i. Now it'll randomly, randomly comment out lines of code um, on the y-axis. And if you have, um, and this is just fun, because visually and like um, in terms of generativeness, <laughs> generative nature, um, if we want to make this compact, we can also uh, by using variables. So. We can set um, the variable for our random range here, um, which is going to be i. So random between 0 and i, we can set a to that variable. And then we can set b to the variable of uh, where in the sequence um, it's choosing from, which is just random. And then I can use v instead of the random here. Um, for our b, and then uh, our variable for our random. So this is doing the same thing. Um, we have a random range here and our b here. But how comments work is um, this will just comment out until it receives another hashtag, and then it'll be closed. So for this, we can do we can now, because now these are a variable, so they'll be recalling the same values. So we can just move this over here, and now all of our lines will be contained. So we can use generate um, with a length of some number. Um, and we can do the same thing we did before. So I'm going to try and build that code really quickly. So um, I'm going to jump all these values down. And then we're going to generate this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is the length. So now we have this code that we can move on the x and y axis wherever we want to, and it will still um, it will still trigger. Um, and this is fun because we can just say I want it to be random on the x axis um, and use. X over here, 
one, two, three, four, to make it random on the y-axis as well. So now it's triggering all of these, um, but it's triggering them randomly on the x and y axis. So now I'm generating E and my um, and my operator. So I can do some simple sequence like cafe T four cafe and sequence through it randomly. So now it's generating E that's going to be placed. The whole code is placed, and then when it leaves, that E is going to move and trigger. And change my octave randomly. another way visually to show some things. Um, I won't be going over Euclid, but there's also a Euclidean rhythm generator that takes um, the maximum length for your, your bangs or your pulses and then how many you want to fit into that length. So uh, I want my length to be 10 and I want it to be four, four, um, four bangs uh, equally fit as as equal as possible into that um, 10 length um, and you can look more up about Euclidean steps um, or Euclidean rhythm generators um, uh, but that's pretty straightforward so I won't get too into that um, okay so in Ableton um, first I want to go over MIDI on a Mac um, so if you want to send MIDI to Ableton um, from Orca, you will need a sort of MIDI loopback thing. And Mac comes with one called the IAC driver. So if you look up your audio MIDI setup and you go to Window and show MIDI Studio, um, there will be a grayed out thing called the IAC driver and you click on it and click Devices Online. Um, you want to make sure it's online, and then that's it. Your IC driver is set up. And in Ableton, you want to set it to receive MIDI from the IC driver. And in Orca, you change through the MIDI devices with command period. And command comma is your MIDI input. Um, you can sync Orca to Ableton if you are sending clock, I think you can send clock from Ableton. Um, I never do this. So I wouldn't even do that, but um, yeah. So set my output to the IC driver bus. Set my output to the IAC driver bus, and I should be good to go. Um, delete these. I'm going to insert a MIDI track. Um, delete this off my master limiter and a bass mono. Um, and we can put a drum rack. Um, so if you know, these are all triggered by different notes. Um, and you can find out what those notes are by triggering MIDI. So MIDI or channel, 
I'm going to set this to in and channel 1 on the IAC driver bus. So it won't be 0 here. Our octave and our note. So that is the crash. That's nothing. Looks like most of the things are in the first octave, or I mean the second octave here, which is one. start from our first octave so yeah I was looking for the kick so the kick is um, octave one note B and we can make sequences with um, we can make sequences with uh, bangs um, so the same way we made a sequence before instead of using this D we can use um, T. I can make this TG, which is 16 steps long. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16. And sequence through it. And then we can put our triggers where we want them to be, just like any step sequencer that you might have used. No swing, unfortunately. Um, uh, we can copy and paste this and do um, different notes. some toms in some places. Erase all this. Put some toms here. I really don't care where anything is. And now you can do some weird things um, with this sequence, like have some conditional thing with another sequence. So if I put a T above where some trigger would be and make it four steps long, um, uh, I can have a trigger be here and then 25% of the time, uh, sequence th sequencing through this randomly, 25% of the time there will be a trigger here when it hits and um, other times it will not. way you can have more normal sequences. You can copy and paste this again down here with something else that is can make this really a 909 banger. I don't even know where this goes.
we go. <laughs> any decay now it's an open hi-hat but um that is a way to make um sequences um other fun things uh you can modulate the bpm uh, which is also why i like having the script here you can also type in here uh with a shortcut that i don't remember because i don't use it but you can do BPM 120. Um, you can do D1, which bangs every frame, or you can use H, which holds an operator, and you can hold this trigger here so that it's triggering all the time. And then I can modulate this. Um, the range is 60 BPM to 120 BPM. I mean, 60 BPM to 300 BPM. So I can make the first range between 0 and 2 or 0 and 3, uh, use an X to make the second range between 0 and 9, and we can move this somewhere else because it's getting tight. Make the third range also between 0 and 9 with another X, so 1, 2, 3, Just 3, another random range from 0 and 9. Um, B, there's two, there's a secret, there's some secret sauce here. Um, <laughs> uh, you can use A, which animates a frame. So BPM, when it's being triggered, will automatically change the BPM to whatever the number is. But um, A will animate from one number to the next um, over a frame rate. Um, I'm gonna make, I'll make this a D actually the random range we use an X over here one two so now I'm triggering this with a random between one and four um, random delay for two one and four that's being translated with an X um, to the spot I'm making a sequence of two letters, A and B. B will be BPM, A will be APM. Uh, animate the, the pulse, and you can see down here, when it gets that random number, it's slewing between it, kind of, saying, uh, we're plusing 120 to the next number that we want. Um, uh, we're animating. Um, and I want a sequence between changing automatically and animating, so. I'm going to use another X to move one, two to where um, the sequence counter is and give that a random value. Oop. Two. Oh, sorry, that's the length, which we don't want. So move this over. Our length is two. We want the and the sequence counter to be random. So now this is A or B. It's an easier way to do this. I don't know why I did it this complicated, but. Erase all this and try and do it um, easier way. Yeah, easier way to do this is with Yumper. So D, Yump that, put a random there. So these are some things that can decomplicate things. <laughs> so this is like a patch that will act like a tracker. Um, so I'm starting by uh, hashing out um, some section of code, and we're going to put our our octave, um, our, for MIDI would be your channel, your octave and your note. Um, for UDP, we're using the synth um, octave and note, and I'm gonna put in all that data um, in threes, just in, in my hashtags here. 
and then we're going to be reading from these. Um, we're going to be reading from these lines of code. So, operator for this is going to be Q. Press Command G. You can look up the operators. And Q reads operands with offset over here. And uh, I finick around for a second. Is that a, is that a, can you say that? I finick around. I frolic around the canvas for a second here. But um, yeah, so we want to read three. You want to read um, three operators, um, and you'll see underneath it'll spit out those three, and we want to move one over from where Q is, because we don't want the hash tag, we want the three, and then we're going to sequence through them with a clock, and then we're going to put our, our UDP operand next to it, but we want the space after, so I'm going to move everything over a little bit. And we're going to read from, read starting from three over now. So three spaces over is going to be um, all of our notes. And we're going to sequence through them with clock uh, to E, add our UDP operand. Um, and then we want to bang that. So I just put the yumper in a place um, that replaces the UDP operator, which is why this is not going to work. You'll see me figure that out in a second. <laughs> and I want to, you can clock this randomly, but I want to clock it um, every frame. So I'm just going to put a one instead of a random. And you'll see it sequences through like a tracker. the effects in Ableton here. I like to use Pro B. Where is my Pro B? Pro B gives you random values every time that there is a um, MIDI event. make this not full screen anymore. I don't even know how to do. So I can map um, these random things. This is eleven. This is Ableton Live Eleven Suite, by the way. Uh, it's a Max for Live device. I can map these to tuning of the shifter, the dry wet of the shifter, um, the delay time in milliseconds of the shifter. Um, the 
fine tune of the shifter in wide mode. Uh, the feedback of the shifter, tone of the shifter. I can duplicate this. Um, can put an auto filter here. Can add smooth, which will interpolate um, between every time it gets a value, it'll, it'll smoothly go to another value, and there's also chance. Um, now I can make these the frequency um, and the morph. And I can set the range and also make it the resonance. Um, and I also like to use um, brick brown stutter. which is a stutter thing. <laughs> uh, yeah. Bubbler is a granulator. also happening in Ableton, I mean, in Orca, over here. Another quick thing, in Pilot, you can um, set the oscillators by the operator, um, the synth that you want. So let's say you want to change five, um, O, S, C, and then the type you want. So saw, saw, S, W, S, W. Um, that just makes um, the the oscillator um synth five and two saw waves. <laughs> And I can put our new thing into the range of uh, what we were doing over here. Um, by moving, doing some maneuvering over here. Here. 
You get the idea. Also, random envelope, which will make all of the synths have random envelopes. Thank <laughs> you. 
you for watching um hopefully you got something out of that uh yeah a little more in-depth tutorial than um the one i did a few years back um if you have any comments uh I'll link to orca and to some resources in the comments below uh if you have any comments please comment um and let me know if i missed anything I'll also go through this footage to make sure I didn't miss anything that I wanted to talk about. Um, yeah, Orca is super fun, and I hope you uh, dive really into it and have some fun with it. Um, yeah, thank you for watching.